Are you really experiencing the joy of Christmas during this holiday season? Well, my name is Ricky Watt. I'm pastor of Havenwoods Baptist Church in Sims, Alabama. And today I want us to talk for just a few minutes about how to have a joyful Christmas. One of my favorite Christmas songs is Joy to the World. We sing it often. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. And yet, so few people, I believe, are really experiencing joy at Christmas time. And so today, what I want us to do is look to the Scripture and ask God to show us how we can have a more joyful Christmas, but also throughout the year, throughout our daily lives, that our lives can be characterized by being joy-filled. Again, there are very few people, I believe, that we can look around at in our lives and really say that is a really joyful person. Well, I believe the measure of joy in our life is absolutely connected to our relationship to God and how He manifests His life in our lives each day. So if you have your Bible, I want you to take them and turn with me to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, and we're going to read the first 12 verses of Matthew 2, and then I'm just going to share a couple of points uh, with you about how we can uh, have a joyful Christmas this year. So let's begin Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. The Bible says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For so it was written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the the child, And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went uh, before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Now, just a couple of things I want to mention to you before we get into the meat of this message is that you notice here that King Herod was the one that summons the wise men to come and talk to him about the birth of Jesus. And and I think it's very ironic that he told them, hey, when you find the baby, come back and let me know where he is because I want to go worship him too. When the reality is he didn't want to worship Jesus at all. He wanted to kill Jesus before it ever got out uh, that, that the Messiah was born. And so you see this, the, just the hypocrisy there in Herod that he wasn't really seeking Jesus for the same reason that the wise men were seeking Jesus. And I think that's really interesting because it says that when they found him, their hearts were filled with great and exceeding joy. J- just the presence of Jesus brought joy to their heart. And and so as we think about that today, I want to think about how can we have 
a joyful Christmas. I believe there's three ways, three things that we can do to truly experience joy at Christmas. The first one is to ask the question, what do you seek? What am I seeking in my life? I think at, at this Christmas time of the year and through the holidays, it's a great time to do some self-evaluation. You know, we're coming up on the new year and, and we all think about, you know, New Year's resolutions and things that we need to change, things that we can do better in the coming year than what we have done this year. And the same is true in relation to our spiritual lives, that we could take this time of Christmas and really evaluate what is it that I'm really seeking in my life? Am I seeking what I want, when I want, how I want it? Am I seeking just to, to be able to please everybody else and make everybody happy? Or am I truly seeking the Savior in my life? Look there in Matthew 2 again, verses 1 and 2. It says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Now, even beyond that, if you look on down there, in uh, in verse uh, verse nine, it says, "After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose before uh, them, until it came to rest over the place where the child was." That the wise men were seeking Jesus. I can just imagine that they probably had to put some things on hold in their lives. They probably had to make some life adjustments to be able to go and seek Jesus. And friend, I would say to you today that it may be during this time in our lives that God may so work in our hearts that He may say, you know what, you need to put some other things on hold. You need to be able to refocus and reprioritize your heart and life. And if you really want to experience joy, begin to put God first in your life. Begin to seek Him first in your life. A verse I quote all the time is Matthew 6, that says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these other things will be added to us. That, friend, we would just realize that God doesn't need to be in our top three or top five of our priorities. That, that God needs to be in first place. And when He is in first place, He brings us joy. He brings us peace. He brings us love. He brings us wisdom. He brings us direction. I mean, you could literally fill in the blank with whatever else it may be that you're needing in your life and say, if I seek God first, He will give me blank. Now, I know it's easy for us to sit here today and say, yes, I need to seek God first, but it's going to take action in our lives. It's going to take us putting some other things aside to be able to say, God, I want you to see that I'm really focused on you. Um, we're coming up on 21 days of prayer after the first of the year. And part of that 21 days is for us to take time to fast and pray. Well, why do we fast? We fast to let God know that He is the top priority in our lives, that He's even more important in my life than three square meals a day. And, and in, in like manner, that we would allow God to evaluate our hearts and say, God, am I really seeking you first? Or are you just one of my top five priorities? Or maybe he's in the top 10 of your priorities. And friend, I want you to know, if you want to have joy in your life and joy in your Christmas celebration, put God in his rightful place. I put in our sermon notes for today this statement. Your level of joy at Christmas is directly related to what it is you seek. 
I mean, just think about it. Your level of joy at Christmas time is directly related to what it is that you are seeking in your life. If you seek God, you will never be disappointed. If you seek Jesus first in your life, you will never be disappointed. As a matter of fact, you'll be amazed at what God does in your life. And your only question will be, why didn't I do that sooner? So if you want to experience joy, a joyful Christmas, just ask the question, what am I seeking? The second question I want you to think about today is this question. Where do you look? Where do you look for the things that you're seeking in your life? What, where is it that you are going to? It may be a person. It may be a habit. It may be a sin. It may be something in your life that you are going to for comfort. And, and, and here's what we'll say. Well, I deserve this. I'm going through a hard time. I'm going through a difficult time. So I deserve to be able to, to indulge in this. My question to you today is, where are you looking? Well, in Matthew 2, verses 7 through 11, again, I want you to see this with me again. It says, Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. And after listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that had uh, that they had seen, when it rose, went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Where are you looking for the peace you need? Where are you looking for the mercy and grace and love? Friend, it may be that we're looking for the right things, but we're looking in all the wrong places. I'm telling you, I talk to so many people who are struggling with bad, unhealthy relationships. And the reason that they're in those bad relationships is because they were seeking something through a relationship that they can only get through their, their relationship with God. It's a relationship that they need, okay? But it's a relationship with God. See, no person or no thing is going to fill the void that we have in our heart that only God can fill. Oh, but friend, when you find that peace with God, He will give you the peace of God in your circumstances and situations, and then you will find joy unspeakable and full of glory. See, it's about what are you seeking and where are you looking to receive what you're needing that only God can fulfill in your life. I wrote as a note here under point number two that your level of joy at Christmas is directly related to where you look. Where are you looking for the fulfillment, for the direction, for the passion of your life? Friend, I'm telling you, if you want to experience joy in your life, seek the Lord. Seek God for what you are looking for in your life. And then the third question that I want you to think of as we close today is what do you give? If you really want to experience joy, not only at Christmas time, but throughout your life, it's much more about what you give than what you receive. I, I, I think of being a child and how, you know, when I was a kid, man, I wasn't worried about what anybody else was getting. I wasn't even considering, you know, what did everybody else want? It was all about me. I wanted what I wanted. And man, if I didn't get what I asked for, 
You know, what I circled with a bright marker in the Sears and Roebuck catalog, you know, well, my, my little heart was broken. Well, why? Because it was about what I was getting rather than what I was giving. And friend, I will tell you today that if you really want to experience joy in your life, you need to think long and hard, am I more focused on what I'm giving or what I'm receiving? See the wise men here in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 11. It says, And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Now, as they were worshiping, don't miss this. It says, then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts. Oh, friend, what are you giving Jesus this year for Christmas? You know, I, no doubt you probably have a long list of, of gifts that uh, of people that you needed to buy for. And, 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 you know, it's sort of funny because sometimes we go over that list and go over that list and then we realize, oh, no, I, I forgot somebody. And, and so then you've got to add them to your list. You've got to go and buy another gift. But, friend, how sad is it that we would think about everybody else that, needs a gift about who all we want to make sure we get them just the right thing and yet we forget that Christmas is Jesus's birthday I ask this practically every year at Christmas but it's a great question to think of how would you like it if you had a birthday party and everybody came to your birthday party, and everybody else got a gift but you. That's sort of the way I think of when I think of Christmas, is, you know, it's Christ's birthday, and yet we are so focused on getting everybody else what they need, rather than, what can I give God this year? What can I give Jesus this year for Christmas? Now, there were three gifts that the wise men brought to Jesus, and they're significant, each one of them, and not only the birth of Jesus, but the life and death of Jesus. The first gift that it says that they brought to him is they brought him gold. Gold was a gift that was a gift for a king. Even though Jesus was just a baby in a barn that day, they acknowledged that Jesus was much more than any ordinary baby. He was born to be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So that gift represents who Jesus was to them. The second gift that was given was the gift of frankincense. And this gift of frankincense was a gift that was used in temple worship. It was a gift for a priest. And again, Jesus came to be our priest. He came to be uh, our, uh, uh, the one that is, stands between us and God, that he made a way for us to come to God. He came to this earth. He lived a sinless life. He surrendered his life on the cross. He died there. He was buried. He rose again on the third day. And because of his sacrifice, he has made a way for us to have a relationship with God. He is our priest. So they brought him frankincense again. It, that was a meaningful gift. It wasn't just, you know, something that they just happened to do. That it was a meaningful gift that they brought to Jesus. And then the third gift was myrrh. Now, for most folks looking from the outside in, probably at that time, they thought, why in the world? I, I, I can understand gold. I can understand frankincense. But why would you bring myrrh as a gift to a baby? And it was symbolic because myrrh was a gift for the dead. To understand that Jesus was born to die. Friend, to understand that from the moment he took his first breath, he was heading to his last breath on this earth. And he was doing that for you and for me. 
So I just want to ask you today, if thinking about our heart to give brings joy to our lives, what could you give to Jesus today? I think the most important thing that we can give to Jesus is our life. To surrender our life to God and just say, God, I, I, listen, what I have, who I am, I give to you. It's my gift. And you may think, well, it's not much to give. You know, with my failures and my messes and my mistakes in my life. But friend, what's so amazing is when you bring the broken pieces of your life to God, He says, that's just what I wanted. It's just what he wanted for, for Christmas this year. And so I would just ask you, would you consider today as you're watching this, would you consider giving your heart and life to Christ today? All that you need to know is that God loves you and has an incredible plan for your life. But friend, your sin and my sin, that's our disobedience to God, separates us from God. So Jesus was born in a barn. He lived a sinless life. He died on the cross. He rose again on the third day so that we could have relationship with God through Jesus. So what does that mean? That means I need to come to Him and confess my sin to Him and ask Him, Father, please forgive me of my sin. And then you surrender your life to God. God, I just give you my heart and life. I ask you to, to take my life and use me for your glory. Help me follow you each day. And friend, if you do that, you can know the peace of God in your life today. And again, what an incredible source of joy we can have. So it may be that you need to give Him your life today. But it also may be that today you need to give Him your sin. It may be that you're watching this right now and you know you're saved, but you've not been walking with God like you should. There's things that have distracted you from walking with the Lord. Maybe there are things that have replaced God as the first priority of your life. You know, I think a lot of times about, you know, if you have a bad attitude. Well, nobody wants your bad attitude. But if you bring that bad attitude to God, He says, that's just what I wanted. You know, nobody else wants it, but God says, that's just what I wanted. Your sin, the ugliness of your life, the brokenness of your life, you bring that to God and He says, that's just what I wanted. You know why? Because that enables you to have the fellowship and relationship with God that He so wants to have with you. So the third statement that I wrote in my notes today is that for your level of joy, or your level of joy at Christmas is directly related to what you give. Again, we think a lot about giving at Christmas. We just don't think a lot about what are we going to give Jesus for Christmas. So here's our feet to faith for today. This is how we practically apply what we have learned. It's simply this. When you look for the right thing, when you look in the right place and give the right gift, you will have joy at Christmas. When you seek the right thing, when you look in the right place, and when you give the right gift, you will have joy at Christmas. And listen, friend, that's my prayer for you today, that you would put other things aside and say, God, I want to experience your joy in my life. And again, understanding joy is not happiness. Happiness is dependent on circumstances. Joy is an inner fruit of the Spirit that God grows in your life that is there regardless of whether it's a good day or a bad day. You still have the joy in your heart. And the Bible even says this, the joy of the Lord is the strength of our life. And it may be that we're very weak spiritually because we're not experiencing the joy of the Lord the way that God wants us to. So I pray that we would let God grow His joy 
in our lives this holiday season. Let me pray for you today. God, I thank you for each one who's joined us today and, and watched this video. God, I just pray that there's something that's been said, Lord, through your word, that God, you'd minister uh, your grace and mercy and love and joy to each one who's watching. God, I pray today that you would help us seek you first in our lives. That, Lord, we would look in the right places. And, Lord, we would be committed to being givers, to experiencing the joy that you have for us. And, God, I pray if there's anybody who's never trusted Jesus as their Savior, that, God, they'd just take time to get alone with you and to confess their sin and call out to you and ask you to come into their heart and life and save them. And that, Lord, they would just begin a true journey a true experience with God day by day as they walk with you. And God, I pray for those of us who do know Jesus, that God, we would surrender everything in our lives that hinders us from experiencing your joy each day. And God, that we would be uh, good examples to others of the joy of Jesus in our lives. And we just love you, Father, and pray this in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. And uh, as always, if you watch this video and it's encouraged you, it's helped you, I want to ask you to please share it with your family and friends on whatever your social media outlets may be. Uh, but also, if you prayed today and gave your life to Christ, or maybe you're going through a tough time in your life and you just need somebody to pray with you, uh, I want to encourage you to send me an email to rickywatt at gmail.com and I promise you I'll pray for you, I'll encourage you in any way that I can, okay? But I really appreciate you doing that for us. And I really pray that this year God would give you a joyful Christmas as you walk closer with the Lord than ever before. I look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you. Have a great day. And remember, Jesus is Lord.